In this video, we're going to talk about series and parallel connections in a circuit. Often, we need to analyze a very large circuit. However, there are certain simplifications that we can do based on whether elements share voltage or share current. It'll become a lot more apparent in Chapter 2 when we start talking about resistive circuits. But for now, understanding that certain circuit configurations can lead to simplifications will help us a lot. So I'm going to draw a circuit and we'll be working with this one over and over again today. It's a circuit that has multiple elements and I'll label them as I did in the last video as 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we're going to talk about something called a series connection first. In series, elements share the same current. So, let's take a look at the current. I'm going to call it I1 and I2. We're going to ignore, for the moment, I3 and I4, but we'll use them later. So I'm going to put them in there to make sure that we understand they should be there. So if we follow I1, let's say we start at this point and we start following in the loop, I1 will first pass through element 1, and then it'll pass out of element 1 and into element number 2. So although I've labeled them as I1 and I2, in reality, because I cannot create current or destroy it, and similarly, there's nowhere else for I1 to go. It can't escape the circuit. It has to stay in this loop here. I say that I1 is equal to I2. This means, so therefore, element 1 and element 2 are in series. This is a definition. And once again, in series, elements share current. Now, let's look at I3. The question is, is I3 the same as I2? Well, we know from Kirchhoff's current law that I3 is actually equal to I1 minus I4. How did I know that? Going back here, incoming I have I2, which is the same as I1. Outgoing I have I3 and I4. So KCL tells me that I1 equals to I3 plus I4, or I3 is I1 minus I4. The key takeaway here is that if I4 is not zero, which is typical if element four is not just, say, an open circuit, then element three and element one are not in series. So element one are not in series. Similarly, if you take a look at my circuit, it's also not in series with element 2, because element 1 and element 2 are in series. Therefore, if element 1 is not in series with element 3, element 2 also will not be in series. So series, we share current. In parallel, though, we share voltage. Let's take a look at parallel. The voltages across the circuits are the same. So I'll redraw the circuit because the drawing above got a little bit messy. And let's take a look now at the voltages across my circuit. So I'm going to call this one V1, and I'll call this one V2. Now V3, I might draw like this. Oop, that should be a V, my apologies. 
and v4 similarly would be here. Now let's take a look at an electron that starts at this point in the circuit. It undergoes a voltage drop if it goes through this line by V3. Similarly, if it goes through this line of the circuit, it would undergo a voltage drop of V4. These two must be the same, or else we'd have a higher voltage even though it's the same point in the circuit. So therefore, V3 equals to V4, which means element 3 and element 4 are in parallel. Now, if you take a look at our same electron, if the voltage drop here is V3, or here is V4, and they're the same, it cannot be the same across V2, because if it were, that would mean that V1 must be zero, but it isn't. So I can claim that these elements are not in parallel with these elements. What's important to remember is that element two and element one are neither in series nor in parallel with elements three or four. It's possible that your elements are not going to be in series or parallel with each other, and that's fine. It means we can't make any simplifying assumptions. For instance, we can't say they share current, and we certainly can't say they share voltage. Thank you.